Hello and welcome to the Battleground Solo League Synopsis. My name is Bratz. I am the general manager. Yeah, we'll call it general manager here for the Battleground Solo League. What we are going to do is we are going to go through the governing document really quick, give a quick, easy description of how it's going to work, what is involved, what's required of you as a player, and how you can sign up. So, starting out with the mission, the mission of this league is basically to promote the teamwork aspect of playing laser tag. We all know that kills are huge and kills get you points, but kills don't always win the game. Uh, this league is really built to see who the best team player is, and that could be pretty much anybody. Uh, kills are important. That is one of the rated uh, categories that you'll be scored on, uh, but it's not the end all for the league, and the mission statement kind of reinforces that. We are looking to to measure your individual contribution to the larger team effort. Uh, the season for the Solo League will run for nine weeks. Uh, that breaks down into a six-week regular season and then a three-week playoff. The regular season of six weeks is a pod format if you've ever watched the World Cup or Olympic-style uh, sports where teams are seeded into pods. Uh, your first six weeks will be playing round robin style the teams in your pod twice. Uh, that will give you a, a score and a placing that will come out of the pod and then be placed into the tournament bracket. The championship portion of the bracket is effectively single elimination. So in order to win the league, you will have to win every round of the tournament. But there will be rounds for everybody. So even if you lose a round, you will still get paired up against somebody else who had lost that equivalent round. And then we will get a final ranking based on where you end in that tournament. League fees. This is a, I don't want to say a premium league, but there is an entry fee. Um, all of the entry fees will be going toward prizes at the end of the season. The entry fee is $20 per player. And in order to fully secure your spot in the league, you will need to pay the $20 to myself. Once the $20 is in, your spot is locked. Up until that point, it is first come, first serve. If the league fills up with 16 players that have paid their full $20 entry fee, we will be taking a wait list. The wait list is $0 to join. And you will be able to join the league if a spot opens up for the full $20. So let me, let me clarify that because that sounded a little bit odd coming out. If someone drops out of the league before the league starts, so before week one, someone says, hey, I can't, I can't continue, they are allowed to back out and then we go to the wait list and grab the first player on the wait list. Uh, at that point, you pay your $20 entry fee. You are now in the league. Everybody else gets bumped up the list. If the league starts, and after, say, two weeks, a player can no longer play, uh, they, uh, in order to keep the league functioning instead of having buys, um, we will go to the wait list, and if you'd like to join, it'll be in the order that you sign up. At that point, it's only a $10 entry fee to join the league. Uh, where it is at the moment, you will take over the uh, points for that person that you have taken over. Scoring in the league on a week-to-week -week basis, it is a best-of-seven competition. So every week you are going to be rated on the following, uh, the following objectives. Total kills, total accuracy for the full session, your mission win percentage for the total session. It is important to know that for the purposes of this league, if you draw a match, that is considered a loss. You have to play to win the objective in order to get the point. The next is objective contribution score. Uh, we will go over this a little bit lot further on, but this is a measure of how much you're actually completing the objectives. And that is based on if there's an in-game scoring aspect. I have figured out a method to isolate that score. If it does not have an in-game scoring, such as a tube or a bell, you will receive a flat score for winning the game. 
the next three are, um, I describe them as derived statistics. Uh, these are not stats that come directly from the game. These are stats that come from a calculation. Points per kill is pretty simple. That is... Uh, points per kill is the ratio of your total score at the end of the session divided by your kills for that session. Highest value wins. So high value is good here. You want to have a high ratio of kills of points to kills. The next one is points per death. This is again the ratio of your total score to the total number of deaths that you have in the session. High value wins here again. The last rated category is your objective mission win percentage. This is your win percentage for the games that do not have a kill only basis of winning the game. Um, this will include all of the missions except for Team Deathmatch, Reaper, Sniper, Terminator, and Elimination. Of all of the categories that we are going to be measuring, objective contribution score is probably the one that will make the least amount of sense, but it is what is going to do the best at measuring how much you add to your team. Uh, this is a breakdown of every single game that you can gain objective points based on the scoring for the league. Uh, these are in alphabetical order, so we'll go through them very quickly. Uh, Blackhawk down. If you win on either side, Tango or Ranger, you will receive 25 points. If you are a Ranger and you survive to the end and win, you will gain an additional 100 points. Uh, that is determined to be a difficult achievement to do, and you get bonus points for doing that. I should preface this list to say that these achievements and these point awards are based on an easy, medium, and hard difficulty award. So easy achievements are 25 points, medium or average are 50, and then difficult or hard are more than 50 points. Uh, game two is Borg. Uh, winning on either side of Borg will earn you 50 points. Domination is next. This game does not have a win base because this one has such an emphasis on capturing tubes. You get 35 points per tube captured, a maximum of 10 captured points. So if you capture 10 points, you can earn yourself 350 points. Now, for a lot of you out there who are watching this right now, you may have a question. How do you know how many tubes we captured? That's a great question. The way that the score is calculated in iCombat, you can reverse the way that the calculation is done. Um, you can remove your base points just for playing. You can remove your difficulty bonuses for playing. You can remove the win victory bonus. You can also remove your average kill streak and your average points per kill. And then I have found that within about a 5% margin of error, which is well enough to measure a point jump such as 35 points for a tube capture, um, I can calculate how many times you've captured a tube how many times you've roughly hit the bell, etc., in the mission. So for, deal, for those games, you will be getting points for completing objectives, not just for winning. So those give you a bigger opportunity to up your score. The next game is Elimination. Uh, this game, during our beta test, we found that um, many fields, it is almost impossible to actually win the Elimination. So we took this out of the calculation for mission wins. However, it is still quite the achievement to actually eliminate the other team, so you will get an objective bonus if you do eliminate the other team. That is worth 100 points. The next game list is Espionage. This one is a win only, will earn you 50 points. If you draw or lose, you get 0 points. Hacker. Uh, I cannot find any documentation that you actually receive score for capturing points. So this game is a win-loss only, where you will earn 50 points for a win on either side. Hell's Bells. This one will win, earn you 50 points for an outright win. 
Then, on top of that, you will earn one point for every estimated bell hit that you have completed during the mission. A loss will still earn you one point per, per estimated bell hit. Jailbreak is a difficult achievement for prisoners to escape. I'm sorry, prisoners, if you win the match, which means you get two-thirds of your team to escape, you will earn 100 base points. Guards, if you win, you get 50 points. Prisoners, if you escape the prison, you are awarded 500 points. This is a direct contribution from the iCombat system. Therefore, if you earned it, you will get it. 500 points for escaping the prison. Judge Dread. This one is an easy achievement. If you win Judge Dread, you get 25 points. Juggernaut. Say, oh, I just realized I've scrolled down. Uh, Juggernaut. If you win on either side, attacking or defending, you will earn 50 points. Military Intelligence. A win on either side is 50 points. Platoon is 25 points per capture tube. Maximum of 10 captures. Recon Run. This one is 50 points per capture tube. Maximum of 10 captures. Rush. Rush as an attacker, you will earn 250 points if your team completes all three levels. 35 rough points per tube capture. Uh, this isn't well documented in the iCombat scoring. I am going to be looking at this score particularly uh, to make sure that it is applying properly in the system. Uh, defender win is worth 50 points on Rush. Safecracker. Safecracker win gets you 50 points. A supply grab win will also get you 50 points. SWAT on either side, thug or police, will get you 50 points. UBL win is worth 50 points on either side. And then Whack-A-Mole is 25 points per tube capture, maximum of 10 captures. Now, in order to make sure that we are not stacking teams and loading up on uh, new sessions and to make sure that people are actually playing in competitive games, in order for your score to count for the week, you will have to play in a qualifying match. A uh, qualifying match it is required to have the following stipulations. Um, the game must have a minimum player requirement. That is 16 players for all of the large fields. That is for Alcatraz. That is for um, Red Dawn. That is for Upper, uh, Baghdad up in Waukesha. And then uh, Camp Leatherneck in Madison. You have to have at least 16 players playing. Shantytown is the exception. That is a much smaller field. That one will only require 10 players if you want to submit a game from there. In addition to the player requirement, you are also required to have one of the following requirements. At least two members of the solo league must be playing one on each team. That does, um, that does mean for the entirety of the session. At least five players playing on difficulty level veteran or higher. Uh, if you aren't able to play with somebody else in the league, which some of you may not be able to, as long as your session has at least five people playing in it that are veteran or higher, that will be a qualifying game that uh, will give you enough difficulty in the session that you will, should not be able to take advantage of the new players. This one is, is the only exception to these rules. If you are playing on elite or legendary difficulty, the player requirement for all fields is reduced to only 10 players. Uh, what this does is it will allow your score to be higher, but your difficulty is significantly higher. Um, this will help you in some of the categories where score is calculated, such as points per kill and points per death. It will also help focus on mission objectives. So if you do want to have higher points per death, points per kill, you may want to look on playing elite or legendary. Uh, otherwise... Uh, veteran is good. Recruit is okay as well. Um, we will not allow stacking of teams. That is going to be regarded in the bottom here. 
Each player will be required to submit their qualifying session each week by Sunday at 11 p.m. local time. In order to submit your mission, your session to me, uh, the email is currently on the screen, bge1v1 at gmail.com. All match the missions must conform to the format as described below. You will need to, in the title, put your username, the week number that you are submitting, the date and time of the session. Example, Bratz, week 1, 7 p.m., March 13th. Reason for that is I need to go in and find the session so I can pull the data. In addition to that title, you also need to attach a summary of your session. This can be either a, screen a screenshot or the email that iCombat sends you. Um, it has pertinent information in that that I cannot calculate just based off of the summary results. So please, that must be sent. It can be a screenshot or a direct forward of that information. Um, the results from each week will be posted to the Facebook official group by Tuesday of each week. If a player has a challenge to any results, they email me, bge1v1 at gmail.com. Specific details about your dispute, and then I will investigate. Um, all results are finalized on Wednesday, and weekly updates will be posted, hopefully in the lobby of all of the locations. I do need to speak to some of the locations to make sure that they'll let me post that. But we do have a weekly recap, a match results, etc. Some fun stuff to look at, and we'll look at that as we get to the documents in a second here. Prizes, rules, miscellaneous information. Hmm. Uh, prizes will be awarded at the end of the season prizes are based on the total entry fees and will be subject to change with the quantity of data that has been compiled I'll be looking to give awards for players who have um, outstanding performance, most improved um, and potentially any other interesting t statistics that come up throughout the season um, there will be awards for coming in first, second and third and I will be creating a eternal plaque that will document the winner of each season uh, other prizes will be free sessions, high combat swag. I'm potentially looking into getting t-shirts created as well. Um, there's a lot coming down the line, but I have to work inside of the budget that the league will provide. Um, this is the one and only rule currently that we have uh, that are, I will call it a subjective rule. Um this is going to be regarding a stomping match, which is kind of described as joining a session with all new players in it and taking advantage of that. Um, due to the requirements of having certain numbers and types of players in each match, I don't think this will be an issue. Um, but at any point, if uh, I find that people are abusing the sign-up system and signing up as uh, teams with other people in the 1v1 and artificially inflating scores, uh, you will be removed from the league without a refund um, and potential further disciplinary action will be taken, such as bans from the league. Um, the purpose of this league is to enforce team play. Yes, it is a competition, but we want everybody to be playing fair and uh, really really playing by the rules and not rigging the system. Um, once week one is completed, I will make zero significant changes to any of the rules or the scoring stated above. The only exception to that is the scoring for rush. Um, if any issues arise uh, and disputes that arise based on scoring, um, and if it affects the league to the detriment that it needs to be addressed immediately, I will address that immediately. Um, I will alert all of the players in the league that this will need to happen. Um, minor rules and scoring changes outside of that, which I'm watching currently, um, are going to be considered in between seasons only. That is the structure of the league. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video. And I'm going to 